जय हिंद एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू दैटिक आई एस लेट स्टार्ट आवर आई एस पी सी एस वाला डेली करेंट अफेयर्स अंडर दैट वी हैव नियर अबाउट सेवन एट टॉपिक दैट वी विल डिस्कस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू विद परस्पेक्टिव टू द यू पी एस सी एज वेल एज द स्टेट पी सी एस सो लेट सी दैट वॉट आर द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द फर्स्ट वी विल स्टार्ट विद द द अवर प्राइम मिनिस्टर दैट टू गिव द एजेंडा फॉर द minister that what they are going to do into the first 100 days after the new government okay so here there is the panch pran concept that has been given by the prime minister we will study about the this five panch pran five so th this panch pran you can use into the gs paper 3 for the economics as well as gs paper 2 wherever you gs paper 1 as well where you are talking about the tradition and the culture and essay as well so this will be for the mains perspective as well as for the prelims both overlapping okay then we will study that pm's wishes to launch code witness to launch code loading of the reactor into the tamil nadu so we will see that there is the fast breeder reactor and that we will see that what is the india's three stage of the this um, uh, power generation plan and program so this will be under gs paper 3 science and technology and yes it will be for the prelims as well as for the mains then we will study that plan for the non lapsable defense modernization fund so we will see that what is this non lapsable uh, lapsable and okay what is this concept and how this uh, help in the whether this uh, how it is used into the parliamentary accountability and transparency so this will be under gs paper 2 parliament okay then we will study this mountain of plastic this will be with respect to the environmental pollution so it will come under gs paper 3 and it will be for the mains gs paper 3 then we will study that how we need to reform into the this anti defection law so yes already there has lot of thing that we have covered so we will study few of the fodder point that you can use for the mains so this will be important whenever you are going to write your mains answer with respect to the anti defection law and anti defection law has been that much into the public domain that there is lot of chance that upsc can ask it either into the prelims or the mains okay so you need to be get clear about the what is this concept of anti defection law then we will study a women's urban employment guarantee act okay so this is the proposal that we need a uh, women's uh, same on the ground same on the basis that we are following for the in ruler area the mahatma gandhi employment Gu uh, guarantee act okay so on the same basis there is the proposal so we can study it under the gs paper 3 because it it is proposed for the employment generation as well as gs paper 2 that talk about the gender justice as well as the schemes of the government okay then we will conclude our say in uh, our session with the relevance of the university ranking okay so this will be under gs paper 2 and in the last there is one thing as well that what is the method that is used by the different this messaging uh, companies such as the whatsapp uh, 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 beta and other companies like the uh, this mobile company as well iphone like the iphone has started pq3 method so we will know that what is this pq3 method for the protection of your privacy your message from the getting cracked or the hacked okay so this will be all about for the today session let's start from the front page the front page modi ji is talking about the let's discuss that what will be the 100 days of the agenda after the new government okay this is not for the now 100 days agenda for the march april may this is after may they will come into the power and 100 day they, they will do that is the they were discussing and for this discussion they will also this will be based on the their plan for the viksit bharat of 2047 and for that they have used lot of they have worked lot of for the two years they are just preparing this proposal and here it has mentioned that what are the area that they have consulted is they have consulted lot of agency lot of huge lakhs of the youth they have consulted they have consulted the niti ayog as well here this is mentioned in this paragraph that how hard work they are doing to make their program that they will achieve into the 2047 okay 
so the when the modi ji come they come with the the idea that there is no need for the long term planning they scrap the planning commission because they need for the five years they thought that this niti ayog will come and there will be quick planning quick decision making but now we are planning for the 2047 so this is the thing okay here the most important thing that you should know is this panch pran so what is this panch pran let's see that what are the content of this panch pran this our tendency to think about to take the pride about the our heritage we have to shed the previous mindset that we adopted under the colonial rule so the first thing of the this panch pran is the Vikshit Bharat developed India. This talk about the what we want to achieve into different areas, particularly this economic and social area. Then we will have to remove the colonial mindset and servitude. That is the gulami of the Indian mindset. Means so the way the Britishers has governed, we follow them. So we have to set that, remove that mindset. the second thing the third thing that is under the, this panch pran is the pride in heritage virasat par garv you have to take pride on whatever the heritage you have such as the you have the cultural historical philosophical for the we have the different type of the philosophy maybe the buddhist philosophy the jainist philosophy six philosophy under the hindu school of thought that all come under the philosophy charvaks philosophy so we should take about the pride we should not follow that whatever the western uh, thinkers and their philosopher have said we should also claim our own genius okay so this is all about we have the cultural historical and philosophical ground where we can take the pride then the fourth pran is the unity and solidarity ekta or ek jutta that will we will talk and under that we will come out of this caste religion regions thing and we have to work as a unity and we have to achieve the goals in united integrated manner so this is the thing okay the last is that duty of citizen nagrik kartav is also important as a citizen responsible person of the india you should have the responsibility and responsibility of taking the india ahead from wherever we are achieving the developed nation status is the our duties okay so increase the active participation putting the national nation above everything even the self interest so this is all about about the panch pran you should remember so developed india removal of colonial mindset pride in heritage unity and solidarity and yes the duty of the citizen this is the panch pran that was given by our prime minister when he was giving a speech in 2022 on the independence day when when the india celebrated its 50 75 year of the independence okay so it was into the i think where it is given it was 75 year and it was the independence day of 2022 okay so here it has given okay yes here it is given 2022 independence day when his speech brought this panch pran so you should remember and by we have aimed by the 2047 when we will be celebrating 100 years of our celebration at that particular day we will achieve this um, our goal of this viksit bharat and everything and this 25 years from the two 2022 to 2047 will be called as the amrit kal so you are living into the amrit kal please remember all this thing next important news that we will take is okay so this news uh, this is just a criminal news we will not go nothing is relevant that we can use after that yes this ramesh was a cafe is in the news just you should remember this cafe this is associated again the next is the mla will upset over the action against the mining mafia the chief minister of himachal pradesh is taking that they were uh, i was doing the good thing i was taking the action against the mafia and those mlas who were associated with the mafia they were opposing rebelling this means he is doing lot of good thing but the, those those mlas they were not understanding his intention okay 
the thing that is relevant for here is uh, this forest fire related thing and we are t this is the control forest fire this control fire uh, forest fire means in the moderation into the regulation into the proper manner with the proper preparation that whenever the forest fire is going out of control we are prepared for with the different type of the uh, risk major uh, major so this is called as the uh, this uh, control fire of uh, forest fire okay so this is under the forest fire management practice and before the summer comes we try to burn down all these leaves and the branches of the trees so that the chances of the forest fire during the summer decreases and it continue and it continue go till the end of april because now it is the still we are into uh, cooler season we are into the winter season and that's why there is less chances of this forest fire going off the control but during the summer there is the these leaves and these tr uh, tree branches are dry there is the heat condition and that's why there is more and more chances uh, of the forest fire so by the april we try to remove all these leaves so please remember this is a major this is a m forest fire management practice that they begin to burn down all these things okay next important news that is on the front page is the seizure of the cargo by the india's is a unjustified as per the pakistan okay so pakistan is telling this what yesterday we saw that there was a truck there was a cargo that that has the as per the india it has the dual use uh, dual use commodities and that's why we seized it but the pakistan is telling that everything was on the paper everything was on the legal paper and despite that india is seizing it is not it is the high mindedness of the india this is the claim so you should know next important news is with respect to the rss link muslim uh, muslim organization the name of this organization is the muslim rashtriya manch and this is supporting the uniform civil code proposal and uh, it is in the context of the recent repeliation of the large muslim laws particularly the muslim marriage law from the assam government what is this law assam muslim marriage and divorce Regist uh, registration act of 1935 has been repealed by the assam government and this organization this represent the muslim community and this is the one of the branch affiliated to the rashtriya swamsevak sang rss so this is talking about this is good and this is supporting despite there is the organization muslim organization such as the all india united democratic front and uh, this all india majlis ittihad muslimin they all are opposing this move of assam government to repeal this act of the muslim marriage act and divorce registration act okay so this organization you should remember for the prelims perspective particularly the state pieces such as the uh, up pieces that muslim rashtri manch this is associated with the rss and this represent the muslim community okay so please remember this beside that you should remember that this ucc uniform civil code that comes under article 44 of the indian constitution so please remember this as well so you should know just let me show you that article 44 this is artic article 44 this talk about the uniform civil code for the citizen and the state shall endeavor to secure the citizen a uniform civil code throughout the territory so what is the uniform civil code this is talking about the laws personal law and what are the personal law the personal law could include the area related to the way we do the marriage the way the divorce is taking place so marriage marriage divorce adoption of child adoption adoption of child not adoption adoption and ad adoption there is a difference so it is the adoption divorce okay the way we there is the transfer of the properties from one generation to other generation this is known as the inheritance okay so all that comes under the 
civil personal law so there should be the a common personal law for the all caste all religious people across the india so this talks under the UCC. Next important news that we are going to take is this PM to witness a launch of core loading of the reactors in Tamil Nadu today. So yes, what is this core loading to the reactors? This reactor is the fast breeder reactor. So what is the fast breeder reactor? There is the emission of the neutron from the core and this neutron is used for the further fission reaction. So you should know that fission reaction where the the one particle is broken down and there is the release of energy. So like the whenever there is the breakdown of the particle or the, there is the any breakdown there will be the release of energy. For example whenever there is the breakdown of a, a, a particular stone or anything if you will touch you will feel that there is the heated. This is a bit heated so that there, this is the release of the energy and whenever there is the a, a fusion there is the combination two particle getting into the single one again there is the release of the energy so this energy is used for the production of electricity this is used here so india has the three stage of the nuclear power program so we will see that what is three stage one of this uh, second stage of this three stage is the fast breeder reactor and here it has used the prototype prototype is this is the first time we are going to experiment it uh, with it and India has become the second nation after the Russia that has gone for the, this fast breeder reactor. So Russia has only this type of the production at the commercial stage. So please remember this. So let's see that what is this three stage. And this is taking place in the Kalpakkam. This is close to the Chennai. So first we will uh, re uh, re locate this kalpakkam into the map let's see that where is this kalpakkam this is kalpakkam this is here and this is at the coast chennai is here and pulikat is here pulikat lake is very famous and yes this pulikat has the some part into the major part into the andhra pradesh some part into the tamil nadu so please remember all this thing beside that you should know that who are uh, the organization that is uh, constructing this reactor the name of this is the bhavani so bhavani means bharatiya navakiya vidyut Lingab limited so please remember this as well okay so what is this free a uh, fast breeder reactor and what is the india's three stage of nuclear power production so let's see about the basics we have some points about this so what is this under this three stage of a reactor we will start with the pressurized heavy water reactor so there is the different technology that we will use in this first stage the pressure a uh, pressurized heavy water reactors under that we will use the heavy water at as the coolant and moderate so what is happening in this whole process so let me explain it in the simple manner so if there is the breakdown of this particle there will be the release of energy release of energy will be there release of energy okay and this energy becomes so high and the this system became very much heated and we need to moderate it moderate means cool it so that's why we need heavy water Heavy water, what is the difference between water and heavy water? In water, we use H2O, but in the heavy water, we use D2O. D is the isotope of the hydrogen. This is known as the deuterium. Okay, deuterium. So please remember that this is hydrogen, this is deuterium, this is the isotope of the hydrogen. So this is used to cool down this heat that is generated into the system beside that this heavy water is also used to moderate the neutron particle that is generated okay so this is the first pressurized heavy water and in this we use the uranium u-235 this is again the isotope of the natural uranium natural uranium that is known as the u 238 this is the 
formula for the natural this is found in the natural manner this is not found into the natural manner there is need for the reaction to bring this okay and this is not in india this is uh, this is imported in india and this is very costly for india and that's why we want to reduce the dependency of this uranium 235 and that's why we are want to enter into the this three stage of the nuclear power production program into the India so, so the first stage is so remember this is the pressurized heavy water reactor that we use in this we use the uranium 235 heavy water as the moderator and coolant and the second thing you should remember is that we produce the plutonium 239 in this and this plutonium 239 we are going into the second stage that is the fast breeder reactor so the second stage is the fast breeder reactor that our, uh, our prime minister has inaugurated this uh, installation of this co into the core okay so this is the fast breeder reactor under that what we use we use the plutonium that we have found into the first stage so it reduce our dependency on the uranium and plutonium and beside that what we use we use the liquid sodium as the moderator and the coolant so coolant and moderator what we are going to use the liquid liquid sodium please remember this okay so this uh, liquid sodium that is efficient because it is the excellent heat uh, it has the excellent heat transfer property and yes it carry away from the reactor's course effectively so we are going to use this okay beside that it also act as the moderator so please remember in the first stage we use the heavy water in the second stage this is the liquid uh, sodium that we are using and plutonium we are using here in the third stage we are going to use the thorium Plot, uh, okay so thorium because the thorium is the very much plenty in the india lot of thorium we have into our coastal area where there is the monogite sand in the monogite sand the thorium is plenty in the plenty manner in the abundant manner okay so this will become us is self-sufficient and here we are going to develop this advanced nuclear reactors still we are trying we have we have planned this into the 1950s that we will achieve this three stage but still we are into the second stage okay here the thing is that again we are going to use the heavy water as here in the third stage you we can use any we have lot of option to use as the moderator we can use the gaseous substance such as the such as the helium and carbon dioxide as well as we can use the liquid metals such as the lead and the sodium so in this third stage we can use water gas such as the helium and carbon dioxide liquid metals such as the lead and the sodium and yes the commonly what we are going to use the heavy water again deuterium deuterium oxide that we are going to use or the graphite okay so here you should remember you don't have to go into the detail but yes you should know about the basics about this three stage of the nuclear power program of india okay UPSC can ask question based on this that discuss the objective of the significance of india's three stage nuclear power program okay so you can write how does this uh, each stage contribute to achieving the country's energy security goals so please write this question uh, this uh, the answer of this question in 150 words and it will be for the 10 marks so please write and submit to your answer into the comment box we will try to evaluate give the uh, any feedback if needed and we will provide the answer approach as well for this uh, this question so please for the today's question this is the homework for you so please write let's solve some of the questions from the prelims perspective that has been uh, we have covered from the topics so please solve the first question which of the following element elements of the punch plan can be linked to the idea of the atma bharat self-reliant india a removal of the colonial mindset developed india c pride in heritage d all the ever please answer please comment into the comment box okay next question consider following statement about the punch pran 
वन दे आर अनाउंस बाय द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ द इंडिया सेवेंटी फिफ्थ इंडिपेंडेंस डे बी सेकेंड दे इन विजन इंडिया एज ए डेवलप्ड नेशन बाय ट्वेंटी फिफ्टी विच ऑफ द एव स्टेटमेंट इज आर करेक्ट ए वन वनली बी टू वनली सी बोथ वन एंड टू टू एंड डी नाइदर वन नॉट टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट सिक्वेंस ऑफ द थ्री स्टेज इन इंडिया न्यूक्लियर पावर प्रोग्राम ए फास्ट ब्रीडर रिएक्टर्स प्रेसराइज वाटर रिएक्टो एडवांस थोरियम रिएक्टो बी पी एच डब्ल्यू आर एडवांस थोरियम रिएक्टर एफ बी आर C. Advanced thorium reactor (PHWRs) and FBRs. Last, D. PHWRs, FBRs, and advanced thorium reactors. Please answer. Next question. Consider following statement about the India's three-stage nuclear power program. First, second stage utilizes fast breeder reactors fueled by the plutonium. Two India's abundant reserves of the thorium, a potential fuel source for the third stage. Which of the above statement is are correct? Only one, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. Please answer. Okay, so this is all about for the this news. Second news we are going to take is this: so the plan for the non-lapsable. defense modernization fund put on hold so you should know what is the non lapsable budget and uh, allocation non lapsable means i will give you money generally what we take uh, 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 do under the budget we generally give them uh, on the march month february march month when the budget is budget is pass at that particular time we give the money maybe there could be the 1000 for the defense sector and ask to do different thing and after one year it is the fave 2024 in fave 2025 we ask that whatever we have given 1000 how much you have spent if you have spent just 800 and there is the 200 that is in your this is the the it is uh, it goes to the april okay uh, march 20, 31 this is the last of the 31st march that is the last day of the this uh, whole budget the eu so if by the 31st march you have not spent you have spent only 800 and 200 you will not spend so it will come into the consolidated fund of india that is the locker of the government of india it will come back from the, this locker we have given 1000 and you have to spend by the 31st of the march if you are not going to spend the money that will come back by the 31st next day all the money that is this is called as the lapsable the money lapse means if you have not used this 200 your right to use this 200 go away there is no need you will not able to use th uh, this 200 after this is called as the lapsable money after 31st march you cannot use 31st march of 2025 okay so this is done into the february that yes this is estimated uh, estimates are made that by 31st for uh, march how much you are going to do this is all discussed into the budget and budget you have to give all this account how much you have used how much you will use by the 30 uh, 31st of the march okay so this is discussed so it gives the parliament power to question if you will give this 1000 rupees and you uh, we will say that you can use for any time there is no accountability so there uh, it will reduce the power and authority of the parliament to question the executive and that's why uh, the, this non lapsable thing is not given okay so this was proposed by the 15 finance commission that there should be the non lapsable fund for the defense and internal security because this is the crucial area but the thing is that despite this is crucial area you have to give accountability you have to be transparent so that the people of india the people of this country can know that what you are using how much money you are taking how much money you are using how much money is coming back so all this discuss so if it become the non lapsable the accountability lacks 
this thousand rupees even you can use after 31st of the March for the any time period you can use okay so this is not good that's why this has been the delayed but there is the lap non lapsable fund for example whenever there is the cess cess is the defined for the particular area that if you are taking cess for the education so it do not lapse so you should remember what is the non lapsable the cess collected or the non lapsable here it has given somewhere it has given that yes the la uh, this um, cess is non lapsable okay so this is all about into the this news article you should know okay here it has given says levite for the specific purpose they are the non lapsable okay next important news that we are going to take is with respect to the science and technology and this is with respect to the the snack genes study find that they evolve 3x faster than the reptiles so there has been the so much evolution into the snacks so this snack they have started their they are ancestor of the lizard and they set their legs to become snack okay so please remember this they were uh, there was no snack near about 100 to 150 million year back after that when there is the evolution into the lizard they become the snack and they become most adapted predators okay and this Lizard made the desperate attempt to evolve, and yes, lastly, it's become so much diversification into the characteristic of the snack. Okay, so here it is given. Snack. This no, this diversification is known as the singularity of snacks. Okay, so please remember this. And uh, these snacks are the so much uh, adapted. They you can find them at the terrestrial area. They can climb the tree. They can even burrow. Okay, swim. They can swim as well. And uh, they have the hunting strategy and the dietary preference as well. So please remember, they can find you can find these snacks in uh, anywhere. Bec uh, you can find them at the mountain place, sand, uh, desert, plain, everywhere. Okay, and here you should know that uh, how they can glide over the land as well as water. It is due to the long spinal column. Okay, so let me show you this column into the picture. This this is the spinal column that makes them to glide on. Uh, on both the land as well as into the water. Let's see a video based on this. I wondered how a snake devoid of legs or fins effortlessly glides over land and water. It's a marvel of nature that leaves many of us intrigued. The secret lies in their long spinal column, a remarkable structure that allows them to perform this unique locomotion. Snakes, as we know, are a group of legless reptiles. Without legs or fins, one might wonder how do they move? The answer is fascinating. Their movement relies on the intricate interplay of their muscles, scales, and the ever-important spinal column. This spinal column, when seen up close, is a lengthy stretch of numerous small bones or vertebrae, each connected to a pair of ribs. The snake's muscles, attached to these vertebrae, contract and relax in a synchronized pattern, creating waves that ripple down the length of their bodies. These waves push against the surface beneath them propelling the snake forward. But it doesn't end there. The scales on a snake's underbelly, known as ventral scales, play a crucial role too. These scales, larger and distinct from the rest, grip the ground and provide the necessary traction for movement. As the snake moves, it lifts certain parts of its body, reducing friction and enabling it to glide smoothly. In water, the snake uses a similar wave-like motion but this time, it's their entire body that undulates side to side. This movement, known as lateral undulation, allows them to push against the water and swim. So this is all about, you should know that whenever there is the, they glide, and what is the main thing? Long spinal column. And you should know that uh, this uh, has, uh, the snake have 300 vertebrae, 
as compared to the just 65 in the lizard and only 33 in the human that make the different body structure despite we have the same genetic blueprint okay so you should carefully about that next important news that we are going to take is the concept of resonance what is this this is related to the frequency natural frequency of any of the thing for example if uh, there is the a swing take example of a swing if there is a swing okay if a child is on the swing and it is moving between the two point okay so if this is swing and the person is standing here you may be here and pushing the child to this direction so if it is if you are pushing in the this direction and when the swing is going in this direction the speed will be smooth it will be natural you have to push the with the lesser force lesser pressure but whenever the the this child is going in this direction and you are pushing in this direction it will be it will be not smooth it will be it will have the less frequency it will not go into the that distance as it will go when the child is in direction and you are pushing in this direction so this is known as the natural swing natural frequency okay so it has application in a lot of area you can use it it is used into the this quartz watch as well as whenever there is the musician who are playing this their instrument uh, they try to use the resonance as well as uh, whenever you go for the M MRI scanner there is the use of this magnetic resonance nuclear magnetic uh, uh, resonance okay so you should remember all this thing and there is the event in 1831 when the British soldiers were passing through the a bridge and they were passing with the natural frequency of the bridge. The name of that bridge was the Bargoton Suspension Bridge and this bridge uh, their foot step frequency matched with the frequency of the bridge and it collapsed. So this is known as the a tragedy and after this collapse uh, there was the rule that whenever the army passing through the bridge they do not go with the their natural frequency means they do not go with the, their natural way of the left right left right this is the way you must have heard this let's see let's watch a video to get clarity on it okay just we have a video a group of British soldiers is marching across it in uniform step left right left Right. Unbeknownst to them, every synchronized footfall is exerting a periodic force on the bridge. The rhythm of their march, it turns out, matches the bridge's natural frequency. The frequency at which it naturally oscillates, even without any external disturbance. This matching of frequencies triggers a phenomenon known as resonance. The bridge begins to oscillate with an increasingly higher amplitude. It's as if each soldier's step is a push on a swing timed exactly to the swing's natural back and forth motion. The bridge, like that swing, responds by oscillating more and more wildly. And then, catastrophe. The bridge, unable to withstand the amplified oscillations, collapses beneath the marching soldiers. This unfortunate incident was a stark demonstration of the power of resonance when left unchecked. From that day forward, soldiers often break step when marching across bridges a practical measure to avoid another Broughton suspension bridge incident. Resonance at its core is a principle of amplification. When a system's natural frequency matches the frequency of an external force, the system oscillates or vibrates with a higher amplitude. But resonance isn't always destructive. In fact, this principle is harnessed in numerous beneficial applications. The quartz crystal in a watch for instance, resonates at a precise frequency, ensuring accurate timekeeping. Musical instruments, too, rely on resonance to produce their rich, beautiful sounds. Even the medical field uses resonance, specifically nuclear magnetic resonance, in MRI scanners to look inside the human body. However, like the... So one thing you should remember is that the natural frequency of the any of the object if matches with the external frequency so the frequency became very high the power became very high so you should know this uh, all about this okay 
नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस माउंटेन ऑफ प्लास्टिक आर चोकिंग द हिमालयन स्टेट दिस इज द न्यूज ओके सो दिस इज नॉट द जस्ट हिमालयन स्टेट वी यू विल फाइंड दैट everywhere such type of the plastic choking is taking place so here it has given that this plastic this plastic and microplastic is not just there but they are uh, within our lungs and the placenta this is the condition they can found into the everywhere from the glacier to the river to the mountain to the forest everywhere and here this is due to that uh, what is the reason the unscientific plastic disposal this is causing the soil and water pollution beside that the rapid and unplanned urbanization and the jump into the tourist footfall this is particularly with respect to this himalayan region even the extent is that much the our national green tribunal it has issued the notice to the ministry of the forest and other bodies such as the our central pollution control board okay state pollution uh, 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 pollution control board for the waste dumping to the eco sensitive areas by the tourist and commercial establishment at that place so you can see that even if you go into the places such as the kedarnath badrinath anywhere you will find such type of the waste that is being created by the tourist and the, those shopkeepers those of the establishment the situation is that in the assam this is the depot will that is a ramsar site ramsar site that is uh, given to the those uh, wetlands those those are the sensitive they have the uh, a large diverse, uh, diversity of the species okay so depot will this is on the brahmaputra river near the guwahati here we have find that the greater adjuntant storks this is the species they were not feeding on the fishes but they are feeding on to the plastic let's see that this uh, this image of this you can see that they were feeding on to the this plastic garbage this is the condition okay so we have found such situation so without uh, beside that in next paragraph it has given that the plastic overshoot day what is this plastic overshoot day the day on which uh, the capacity of the uh, the, uh, the elimination for example just take a simple example that if you take the example that uh, we are able to uh, produce uh, total quantity of uh, plastic that could be 1000 kg just assume and the nature nature can eliminate or consume in a sustainable manner that is only 200 kg okay so if you take into the one year this is the capacity we produce and nature in one year it can consume or it can eliminate into uh, 200 kg so we will start from the 1st january this is the first day and the 31st december that is the period so you think that this 200 kg we achieve into the 5 march so this will be known as the over a plastic over suit day of the that year so it changed maybe this uh, 200 kg we can achieve on the 10th of april or we can ap uh, achieve this earlier 25th of the february so this day this particular day when we will achieve this 200 kg they, that will be known as the plastic over suit day so please remember beside that here it has mentioned other data this is known as the mismanagement waste index here the performance of india is not good and you should remember that what is this mismanagement waste index this is the gap in the waste management capacity and the plastic consumption that we do the government see that they are able to recycle the plastic 60% but the reality is that they are there has been the data that found that only 12% of the plastic waste that has been able to recycle and 20% beside that we are burning so the government is counting this 20% un under the recycling but this is not recycling okay so even 68% of the plastic is unaccounted for now the government to mean 60% uh, 68% means if there is the 168 kg of the plastic generation 68 kg is not accounted only 100 kg government is accounting and 60% even has been not counted in this data okay so this is the condition here it has given in the next uh, paragraph that what are the law that has been dealing with the 
waste management in the case of the plastic this is the solid waste management rule please remember this plastic waste management rule 2016 and extended producer responsibility 2022 so these are the rules that uh, has been dealing on the national level okay but we need a special uh, condition for the hilly area because the condition and infrastructure needed there is the different and yes producers importers and the brand owners they are given the responsibility beside the local bodies and beside that we have seen that different state government have brought different by laws and the rules with respect to the dealing with the waste management for the plastic for example here it has given the himachal pradesh and sikkim have a special state to banning the use of plastic beside that we have seen that mizoram has proactively on the regulatory front and as all municipal corporation made by law under the this act okay so this here it has given the law but the thing is that they don't have that much capability funding to implement all this thing beside that there is the need a special need uh, for the segregation and this segregation is lacking this is causing other area into the this waste management with respect to the this plastic segregation of even the plastic in different categories needed one could be in the segregated in the different on the thickness the recycling reuse all this thing is considered okay here it has given that the, there has been the local bodies, they are the pivotal in the dealing with this waste management of the plastic. But the thing is that the power that has been provided is not clearly uh, uh, defined beside that the funding is lacking. Okay, here it has given. So what is need? The need of our is that please empower the local bodies. The first thing you can do and you have to create necessary infrastructure. You have to bring the public education campaign okay beside that we need to collect the data what is the need and what is the uh, what is the being done on the ground there is huge gap so data is needed to yes beside that we need to convergence of the different schemes such as the swachh bharat mission Mahatma Gandhi National Ruler Employment Guarantee Act and Finance Commission Grant and all this should be converged for the infrastructure creation because there has been the funding into the area of this waste management. Okay. Besides that, it has suggested that the Swachh Bharat course and this corporate social responsibility and other such contribution can be used for the augment the resource and create the infrastructure we can also need to convert this total mission for the renovation and the urban transformation and the smart city scheme all this need to be converted for the infrastructure creation this is all about you should know so whenever the question comes on the gs paper 3 plastic waste management so you can use this point you can start with the this is the situation there has been the effort by the state law there is the national law but the thing we need to do here you can bring the local bodies funding convergence of funding that is the you should go in the this sequence here for the prelims you should remember this plastic over suit day next important news that we are going to take is with respect to this anti defection law already we know that what is going on what was the condition what was the event that happened into the himachal pradesh recently then we saw that the condition into the maharashtra with respect to the ncp and the uh, a few chain of action so here the there has been the very much a, a lot of discretionary power used by the speaker that has marred the law itself okay the way the speaker has defined that inter-party dissent that is need of the hour there is the natural tendency into the political system the speaker itself has taken the uh, this uh, uh, this uh, stand that this inter-party dissent cannot be subject to the punity provision of the 10th schedule so all the motive behind the creation of this law become dysfunctional if you have taken this stand so here it is given that in the all uh, all these cases there was the case that anti defection law could have been applied because there, the law says that whenever there is the there is the split split in the party and they are not going to merge or they are not merging with the other party if there is the split or there is any voluntary 
uh, uh, leaving off the original party where you have got elected or the any such tendency if there is so you will be disqualified but only safeguard is that you are going to merge and there is the two third member are supporting so what is the condition when you can not be disqualified the merging means think that there is the party and uh, there is the breakdown of this party okay this party is breakdown and uh, if it has the one third member here and two third here okay so if after this if this party go and merge with the other party party x that is existing here it goes and merge then only they can be there be there will be no disqualification and this party can take a new name or anything this there will be no qualification for this as well this is the condition that same otherwise if any split is there there will be the disqualification but in the case of the ncp or the shiv sena they break down and they have this number two third but they didn't merge the merger was not there neither the ncp neither shiv sena faction of the ekna sin they merged with the bjp they remain a, a separate party and they brought the new concept that we are the original party so this concept is nowhere mentioned into the uh, that prevent the disqualification so that is the here it has mentioned that yes this is the case beside that it has given that what is the need for that okay so what we need we need to bring the sum of the review of this the decision making power of the speaker and beside that we uh, we need to bring to a uh, robust democratic intra party democracy inner party democracy within the party we need a more democracy and by that we need to give more power to the election commission so that they can implement this intra party election and process of selecting the candidate all this is needed and for that we need to bring more power to the election commission even the law commission report has mentioned this we need to bring change into the representation of the people act and so that we can bring more robustness for the uh, being a, a proper constitution of the each party political parties elect and executive committee all this should needed to be implemented then there will be the inter party democracy that could be achieved this is all about that has been mentioned beside that we have two and used into the this uh, this section of uh, editorial but they are not that much relevant here it has given that there has been the change into the gdp data so frequently the government and nso is changing its data so uh, there is a, let's see that when a final data is coming and after that this is again the issue that is going into the gaza and uh, the way israel is attacking there has been the death and is stampeded in uh, uh, this gaza area there has been the death of at least 112 people and 700 has been uh, injured so this is a type of the inhuman condition that has been uh, frequently seen so we will not go into the detail of that next important news that we are going to take is with respect to this a women's urban employment guarantee x so it is talking about a new paradigm to bring into the urban area uh, same on the ground that is already in the form of the manrega mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act that is is for the rural area so here it has given that reducing the gender gap and increasing women's empowerment that is part of the sustainable development goals and it is i think fifth goal okay so out of 17 there uh, this is the fifth goal okay so this is the so here it has mentioned that this manrega that has created lot of uh, employment opportunity for women in the rural area but the case into the urban area is very different and here the the women facing the social norm lack of safety and the hostility transportation options that's why they are in the urban area the workforce joined by the women is less and it is reflecting into the periodic level for survey as well it has mentioned that only 
22.9 percent of the women that are work uh, that are the part of workforce so here it is talking about that the the unemployment rate of this urban women is higher it is 9 percent as compared to the 4 percent into the into the rural area okay so there are the two type of the person or uh, unemployed person one is that who are uh, who don't have the work and they are actively uh, uh, wanting for the job other is that they don't have the work but they are not actively seeking for the job in the in the urban area the women's the first condition is more means those women who want a job but the job is not there they are searching for the job and they are unemployed this condition is more and that's why the writer is proposing that uh, yes there should be we should implement this uh, um, urban uh, empowerment guarantee act for the women's okay so we can bring it for the 50 percent of the women 50 percent of the men but yes more emphasis should be given to the 100 percent of the women should be provided but yes case could be there the 50 percent for the uh, men and 50 percent for the women beside that when you are going to provide all this thing there uh, this thing there is the issue of the unskilled lack of the skill and the mobility issue in the women that also need to be resolved into the urban area so here it has mentioned that uh, one of the successful example of the karnataka and here it has given that what could be the terms what could be the uh, here it has mentioned that it can be provided for 150 days 500 rupees and even in that condition it will be just 1.5 percent of the gdp so it can be it can be achievable it can be feasible okay and even if you will add administrative cost will be just two percent but the benefit of this act will outwit the physical consideration and conservative uh, conservativeness so all this uh, here it has mentioned okay next important news is talking about on the relevance of the university ranking system so here it has given that the lot of companies are there there are the private players they do the ranking of the different colleges universities and yes here it has given the one of the famous ranking company that is the times higher education so here it has given that yes they give the ranking but there is the issue with this ranking system one thing is that they have their own parameters that doesn't match the need of the different university because different university university are located into the different uh, different uh, physical and different location of the world they have the different dem demand as per the local needs and they have the common parameter that is not to, uh, as much effective as the local need for example and there could be the different priorities area so thus that is the one thing lacuna the second lacuna is that there is the uh, there is the conflict of interest of these uh, companies and uh, this ranking because they also provide the suggestion and uh, recommendation on the personal basis of the each the uni university different university and as per well, there is the biasness whenever the university hired them to provide them the suggestion recommendation and the services so they give the higher ranking of those universities there could be the case that yes they have improved on different conditions but yes there has the always there is also the case such as the Savita Dental College in the Chennai they have manipulated the citation such manipulation has been seen and there has been the dramatic change into the their ranking system so here the many example has given has been given uh, there beside that it has also found that the data the university get uh, give the access to the this private companies they they give the ranking they could be also misused by this companies so this is the privacy issue as well that has been mentioned here next important news is with respect to the apple is going for the p3 protocol to enhance the data security for the user so what is this so whenever you do messaging or anything what you do you code and you have the you write and you send so in between the latest format uh, latest uh, format has been changed for example you have written for example if you have written anything you have written k h a n so by encryption it will be changed to the two six nine one okay 
so in between it will be like this and when the receiver will get it it will again change into the k h a n so this could be the again converted so there is the encryption encrypted here it is uh, if changing k h a n to the 27 this is known as the encryption and changing from the this 2791 to the k h n this is known as the decryption decryption so this is the process that is being done so here uh, there is the two provision this is the public key and the private key that is used but the now this p3q pq3 that is the use of the quantum technology so you should know this is the quantum technology that is going to make it more difficult because the weight is being changed till now uh, it could have been the mathematical equations and now the com quantum computer can break those quantum uh, quantum uh, those equation mathematical uh, uh, equations and that's why now we are going to use this uh, quantum computers quantum technology so that we can you we can make this inscription more difficult and beside that we are also going to segregate this uh, data this encrypted uh, 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 this encrypted messages and uh, data from uh, storing by the those who who are in the middle those hackers and the other entities so you should know this just you should know that this p3q that is a type of the encryption and decryption method okay and that uses the quantum technology okay so that is all about so here i have covered most of the relevant areas that has been covered for the two uh, in the today's newspaper so here i will conclude my session thank you for joining the session all the best jai hind